I auditioned for it and I got it and uh, the teachers were not very happy and they told me if I did the movie uh, I was gonna get kicked out of school. Of acting school? Yeah, because you You're know. like, wait, this is kind well, of the goal, right? At just 18 years old, she daringly fled Cuba with a mere $300 in her pocket. Turning her back on everything she knew, she faced the stark reality that defectors were branded traitors in Fidel Castro's regime. And that's not all. Ana didn't speak a word of English. Imagine hitchhiking an incredible 90 miles around trip just to attend acting school, only to be cruelly kicked out the moment she landed her first role. Despite not knowing a word of English, Ana de Armas fought her way to the very top and has become a regular face on our screens. She has starred opposite established Hollywood thespians like Daniel Craig and Keanu Reeves. For an immigrant who literally started from the bottom, one question begs, how in the world did she get here? Today, Ana de Armas is a world-famous actress with highly successful movies and an Academy Award nomination under her belt. Anna's recent success bears a direct contrast to her upbringing, which featured horrible living conditions like food rationing, erratic blackouts, zero internet access, and tons of other troubling adversity. Her journey through Hollywood came with its fair share of trouble, criticisms, and face-offs. Why did she almost turn down Knives Out, a movie that shot her career to its peak? What movie did she get cut out completely of during the editing stage? And how did she manage to star opposite Keanu Reeves in a movie without knowing a word of English? In this video, we will take a deep dive into Ana de Armas' life, career, and road to success while answering these intriguing questions along the way. Ana Celia de Armas Caso was born in Havana, Cuba on 30th April 1988. She was, however, raised in Santa Cruz del Norte, a small city close to Havana. Her father, Ramon, took up myriads of jobs such as teacher, school principal, bank manager, and deputy mayor at some point. Her mother, on the other hand, was a civil servant who worked in the Human Resources Department of the Cuban Ministry of Education. Ana has one older brother named Javier, who is now a professional photographer based in New York. Her maternal grandparents were Spanish nationals who migrated to Cuba, she would later take advantage of her Spanish citizenship by descent when she moved to Spain at 18. Her childhood was a deeply difficult one by every standard. She had no internet, food wasn't enough at home, fuel shortages were rife, and electricity blackouts were pretty much the norm. For a long while, her knowledge of popular culture never quite transcended Cuba. She got 20 minutes of screen time on Saturdays when she was allowed to watch cartoons, and given the fact that her family did not own a DVD player, Anna only got to watch Hollywood movies at her neighbor's apartment. Despite all of these difficulties, Anna considers her childhood a happy one. My father worked in the People's Assembly, and my mother in Human Resources at the Ministry of Education, but they were very present. Those were the happiest years of my life, I guess that's why I go back to Havana whenever things get a little ugly. In an interview with Hollywood Reporter, Anna revealed how she had memorized monologues and practiced in front of a mirror. As a child, I loved horror movies, and I suppose that the cinema must have had an influence on me to decide that I wanted to be an actress, because I remember that after seeing one of those films with my grandmother in Cuba, I would always go in front of the mirror and repeat the scenes. At age 12, she launched a big dream to become an actress, marking the very beginning of her acting career. Anna walked the talk and auditioned successfully to join the National Theatre of Cuba in Havana. In an interview with TV host Jimmy Fallon, Anna de Armas described her experience having to hitchhike to take her acting classes. Well, I didn't do the thumb thing. I just go to the stoplight so the cars have to stop. <laughs> Jimmy and the audience were astonished, just as you probably are right now. In that same interview, she revealed that she got her first acting role during her second year in acting school. Her teachers, however, threatened her with expulsion if she dared take the role. And wouldn't you know, she damned the consequences and took the role. And they told me if I did the movie, uh, I was gonna get kicked out of school. Of acting school? Yeah, because you you're know. Like, Wait, this is kind well, of the goal, you're right? Movie, like, you're not going to school, so. I understand, yeah, but. Uh, I still did it though, so. That's right, yeah, look at you now, come on, yeah, exactly right. She, however, had to repeat the class after her teacher didn't follow through on the threat of expulsion, but like she said in the interview, it was worth it. Anna went on to film a total of three movies during her time as a student. She starred in the 2006 romantic drama Una Rosa de Francia. Famous Cuban actor Jorge Perigoria recommended her for the role after meeting her at a birthday party. The director then paid a visit to Anna's school, and while she was auditioning, he interrupted her to let her know she had gotten the role. She had to travel to Spain as part of promotional efforts for the film, and while she was there, she met Juan Lanja, 
who would later become her Spanish agent. She also starred in El Eden Perdido, 2007, and bagged a supporting role in Madrigal, 2007. The latter was filmed at night behind the backs of her tutors. In what was a successful effort to avoid Cuba's mandatory three-year community service for graduates, she left drama school just months before her graduation. She then moved to Madrid at 18 thanks to her Spanish citizenship by descent. Within two weeks of her arrival in Spain, Ana de Armas met Luis San Narciso, a casting director who had seen her performance in Una Rosa de Francia. A couple of months after the encounter, he got her a role in the Spanish teen drama El Internado, in which she appeared for six seasons between 2007 and 2010. El Internado was set in a raucous boarding school and grew increasingly popular, making Ana a celebrity in her own right. Filming breaks from the show allowed her to star in Mentiras y Gordas, 2009, a mildly successful coming-of-age comedy. At some point, Anna started to feel typecast as a result of mainly getting youngster roles. She took yet another huge step during El Internado's penultimate season and asked to be written out of the show. I'm really doing much more here. I've done everything I had to do, so it's time to go. And I asked them to me. She eventually moved to New York City with hopes and dreams of learning English and breaking into Hollywood. After only a few months in the Big Apple, Anna was urged to return to Spain to star in 17 episodes of Hispania from 2010 to 2011, a historical drama. She also starred in El Callejón 2011 and Punado de Besos 2014. After a long period in Spain without acting work, Ana de Armas decided to move to Los Angeles. In an interview with the Spanish publication La Vanguardia, Ana revealed she practically had to start her career again, from scratch. Her lack of fluency in English certainly did not help matters and she had to enroll in full-time classes to learn English properly. During her recent Saturday Night Life monologue, she credited the hit show Friends for helping her learn and master English. Learned English the way everyone who comes to this country does, by watching Friends. Her staunch commitment to learning English was all in a bid to avoid being typecast again, this time for Latina roles. Ana got a Hollywood gig in 2015 starring opposite Keanu Reeves in the 2015 erotic thriller Knock Knock. In the movie Knock Knock, Ana de Armas portrays Belle, a seductive and enigmatic young woman who, along with her friend, unexpectedly arrives at the home of Evan Weber, Keanu Reeves, during a stormy night. What starts as a seemingly innocent encounter quickly turns sinister as Belle and her friend entangle Evan in a series of escalating mind games and manipulative schemes. Her English was still very poor, and she had to learn her lines in a rigid phonetic manner. She basically finessed her way through the audition and ended up getting the part. The film got mixed reviews from critics while Anna's performance was criticized by Randy Cordova of Arizona Republic who found her unconvincing. A while later, Keanu called Anna to invite her to play a Spanish language role in his then upcoming film, Daughters of God. The producer had hoped the film would be a comeback opportunity for Diarmas. However, excessive executive meddling amongst other factors led to severe editing of the movie, and her role was ultimately reduced. When the film was released in 2016, Diarmas again caught some flack, particularly from Frank Sheck of The Hollywood Reporter, who noted that despite being appealing, she did not properly depict her character's intense emotional demands. The scathing criticisms from the critic community did not stop De Armas from landing more roles, including a supporting role in War Dogs, 2016, where she acted opposite Miles Teller as the wife of an arms dealer. Her role in the movie again required her to memorize her lines phonetically. IndieWire David Elric described her performance as memorable in a thankless role. She also starred in the biopic Hands of Stone. Hands of Stone tells the gripping true story of legendary boxer Roberto Duran, focusing on his rise to fame and his tumultuous relationship with his trainer, Ray Arcel. Ana de Armas portrays Felicidad Iglesias, Duran's devoted wife, whose unwavering support serves as a pillar of strength throughout his career. As Felicidad, de Armas brings depth and humanity to the narrative, portraying a woman who navigates the highs and lows of Duran's journey while facing her own challenges. Although it faced a delay in its release, Hands of Stone was actually the first Hollywood movie de Armas filmed. The director, Jonathan Jakubowicz, reached out to her while she was in Madrid after watching El Internado and got her to fly to LA to audition for the part. Fast forward to 2017, she landed a supporting role as Joy, an holographic girlfriend in Denis Villeneuve's futuristic effort, Blade Runner 2049. Her performance in the movie garnered widespread critical acclaim with Anthony Lane of The New Yorker describing it as wondrous. The performance also earned her a Saturn Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. However, it didn't pan out as the breakthrough she thought it would be due to the film's uninspiring performance at the box office. In the same year, Anna landed another role in the thriller Overdrive, 
starring opposite Scott Eastwood as his character's love interest. In 2018, DeArmas scored a role in John Hillcoat's medical drama, Corazon, where she played a Dominican woman suffering from heart failure. She also featured in the 2019 romantic comedy Yesterday, but her scenes were cut from the final product because the director Danny Boyle felt her introduction as part of a love triangle would not sit well with audiences. The screenwriter, Richard Curtis, discovered that the audience disapproved of Jack's wandering eyes, believing that if he was so readily captivated by another woman, he didn't deserve Ellie's affection. DeArmas' breakthrough came in 2019 when she got cast as an immigrant nurse in Rian Johnson's murder mystery film Knives Out. In an interview with Hollywood Reporter, she recalled being averse to the idea of playing a stereotypical pretty Latina caretaker at first. She later learned that it was so much more than that, and accepted the role, dishing out a praiseworthy performance while at it. The Times reporter Tom Schoen was impressed with DeArmas' performance and remarked thus, The film's standout performance comes from its least well-known member, the Cuban DeArmas, who manages the difficult task of making goodness interesting. Knives Out was a major box office success, and it triggered a surge in DeArmas' popularity with American audiences. She won the Saturn Award for Best Supporting Actress, and picked up a Golden Globes nomination for Best actress. Following the huge success of Knives Out, DeArmas again dazzled on our screens in the pandemic-stricken year 2020, starring in four films. She got a supporting role in The Informer, for which she garnered praise and recognition from critics. She then appeared in The Night Clerk as a femme fatale, and much of the film's positive laudation was about her charismatic performance. DeArmas also starred in the Netflix biopic Sergio in 2020, and her performance as a UN economic consultant and Sergio's girlfriend earned her sterling reviews from critics. And in what was her first filming effort in her home country of Cuba, Anna starred as the wife of one of the Cuban fly in Netflix's thriller Wasp Network. The movie recounts the real-life events surrounding Cuban spies operating on American soil during the 1990s. Her delivery was met with critical acclaim and Jay Weisberg of The Variety praised her as a joyous, bewitching presence whose career seems destined for the big time. 2021 was an historic one for Anna, starting with her appearance as Bond Girl in No Time to Die, a screen reunion with Daniel Craig, Anna de Armas's portrayal of Paloma, a young rookie CIA agent who acts as Bond's contact in Cuba, captivates audience. One of her memorable lines in the movie. I know. I've done three weeks training was actually the length of time she had training for the role. This revelation adds a layer of authenticity to her character, as it mirrors DeArmas' own challenges in preparing for many of the action and combat sequence in just three weeks. Paloma's effortless prowess in combat scenes, despite her limited training, mirrors DeArmas' real-life feat of delivering convincing action sequences within a tight time frame. Three weeks training? Really? More or less. We're still gonna need that car. Salute. Salute. The film was a global hit, raking in over $700 Mullers worldwide whilst notching mostly positive reviews. She also starred opposite Ben Affleck in the erotic thriller Deep Water, in which Ben Affleck plays Vic, a wealthy husband who allows his wife, played by Anna de Armas, to engage in extramarital affairs to prevent a divorce, finds himself under suspicion when her lovers mysteriously vanish. While on the set of Deep Water, Affleck and de Armas' relationship blossomed into something, and they started dating in March 2020. Anna made it official in April 2020 when she posted a pic of them celebrating her birthday together. Sadly, they broke up in January 2021 after nearly a year together. In 2022, Anna starred in the Russo Brothers Netflix thriller The Gray Man, which suffered lackluster reviews from both critics and audiences. De Armas landed another iconic role when she was contacted by Andrew Dominic to play Marilyn Monroe in the Netflix biopic Blonde, 2022. In preparation for the role, she teamed up with a dialect coach for a year and studied tons of photographs, videos, and recordings. Her interview with Variety detailed everything she had to do to bring the legend Marilyn Monroe to life. I was working with the dialect coach every day, several hours a day, watching her films, reading the book, just on YouTube all day long, just finding random videos of her and interviews and footage and audios and everything. She also revealed having to bleach and shave her eyebrows as part of preparations for the movie. I felt the pressure. I felt observed, judged, or at least that's what was going on in my head. And every time when I was struggling with that, Andrew would come to me and tell me, that's it, go with it, because that is literally what she's going through. 
Notwithstanding, her casting was heavily criticized because of her Spanish accent. Thankfully, this didn't stop the flurry of golden reviews her performance received once the film came out. Richard Lawson of Variety had the highest of praises for her performance and commented thus, The Armas is fiercely, almost scarily committed to the role, maintaining high and focused energy through every torrent of tears and screams and traumas. She received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, making her the first Cuban in history to be nominated in that category. She also got a Golden Globe nomination as well as Screen Actors Guild Awards and the British Academy Film Awards nominations in the same category. De Armas starred opposite Chris Evans in the 2023 Apple TV Plus comedy Ghosted. Scarlett Johansson originally had the role, but De Armas replaced her due to scheduling conflicts. Cole, played by Chris Evans, a down-to-earth individual, becomes deeply infatuated with the mysterious Sadie, played by Anna De Armas, only to be stunned when he learns she leads a double life as a secret agent, before they can even contemplate a follow-up encounter. Cole and Sadie find themselves thrust into a global escapade to thwart a looming threat to humanity. While critics judged it, the show went on to become Apple TV Plus most watched debut. Ana de Armas has come a very long way, from a child who didn't have access to a world outside Cuba, to being one of Hollywood's biggest superstars, a fantastic come-up story if there ever was one. We look forward to more outstanding performances from the star.